Hey everyone, PJ here, and in today's video I'm going to present something that has been on my mind for a while. You've read the title, so you already know what it is. Happy Tree Friends characters as D&D characters. Before we begin, let me set some rules. Rule number one, no fan characters. So don't expect to see Snowers, Nikki, Kulu, Deeper, Skaggles, etc. to make an appearance. Rule number two, no spin-off characters. So we can exclude Buddhist Monkey, Panda Mom, Sneaky, Mouse Kaboom, the Tiger General, and Splendont. Rule number three, no secondary characters. So we can exclude the Ant Family and Mr. Pickles. And lastly, rule number four, no background characters. So now we can exclude Truffles, Fat Cat, and all members of Fallout Boy. What I've done is I've taken the main series cast, assigned each character to a certain class, and then drawn what I think they look like. And also, take this video with a pinch of salt. I've only recently started playing D&D, and I am by no means an expert. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start off with the series poster boy, Cuddles. Cuddles is always seen as rambunctious. Always outplaying, always full of energy. So in a D&D setting, I imagine him being the kind of person to run headfirst into battle. So the class that I thought fit Cuddles the best is the Fighter. So here's what I came up with. Notice how his sword is in his left hand. In the blurb episode of Can't Stop Coffin, he's said to be left-handed. Other than that detail, he's basically wearing what you'd expect your typical fighter to wear. Up next is Giggles. Personally, I think being a healer fits her the most, so I decided to make her a cleric. And this is what I came up with. Nothing too spectacular, just your typical cleric outfit. Trust me, these get more creative later on. Up next is my personal favorite character, Toothy. This one might have a little bias, but I decided to make my favorite character my favorite class. The Paladin. So, this is what I came up with. Notice how I left the chainmail down here completely untouched. This is because I didn't want to mess it up. Because, when you know it, chainmail is not fun to draw. Rounding out the original quartet is Lumpy. I debated on what class to assign Lumpy to, but then I remembered this detail. Lumpy has worked in the construction field on more than one occasion. In the episode Wrong Side of the Tracks, he's seen building a roller coaster, and he's even been part of a construction crew in the episode Concrete Solution. So Lumpy is capable of construction, albeit somewhat. So I decided to make him an artificer. So what I came up with is this. I wasn't sure how well the goggles would fit on top of his forehead, so I decided to hang them on his antler. Up next is Petunia. I decided to make Petunia a magic-based class, so why not make her a druid? This is what I eventually came up with. Not much to say about this one, let's move on. Up next is Handy. I'm not going to beat around the bush here, Handy would obviously be an artificer. So this is what I came up with. I think this design goes well with his physical appearance. Up next we have Splendid. So with Splendid being undoubtedly the strongest character in the entire show, I thought I'd assign him to a class that's ridiculously powerful. The Monk. So here's what I came up with. I decided to make his sleeve thingies, I don't know what those are, but I decided to make them match the color of his mask, as well as his belt and flaps. And who knows, maybe he could multi-class as a druid and become absolutely broken. Up next is Sniffles. Again, this one was obvious. Artificer. Except Sniffles would be a lot more technologically advanced than the others due to his scientific background. So the design I came up with is this. I decided to give him a cybernetic hand. And yes, the red eye is necessary. Up next is the returning winner of the Father of the Year Award. Pop and his son Cub. My guess is that Pop would most likely be a ranger. So here's the design I came up with. I try to make Pop's outfit match the color of the robe he wears in the show. I imagine that he'll make Cub his apprentice when he comes of age, but for now he just does what he can to take care of him. Up next is Flaky. Flaky is quite a frail character, so I can't imagine her getting up close and personal in battle. So I made her a sorcerer, so that way she can fight from a distance. The design I came up with is basically what you would imagine your typical sorcerer to wear. Up next is everyone's favorite sugar addict, Nutty. It's a bit of a stretch, but I'd say barbarian. So the design I came up with is this. I decided to make his equipment candy-based. Though someone might need to constantly remind him that his equipment isn't actually made out of candy. 
Up next are two kleptomaniac raccoons that everyone loves to hate, Lifty and Shifty. This is another obvious choice. They'd both be rogues. Since I decided to give them different outfits in order to make them more distinct, I thought it would make sense to draw them individually. So, for Lifty, I came up with this design, with his nose and mouth covered by a mask. And although you can't see it, he is in fact doing his iconic smile underneath the mask. And for Shifty, I came up with this. I changed the color of his hat from green-ish to black to make him fit the rogue look better. He also has multiple weapons concealed underneath his robe. Up next is the mole. Now, take this one with a pinch of salt since I've never played this class before, but I decided to make him a warlock. I thought that since he's blind, it would make sense to make him a magic-based class. I don't know if warlocks are allowed to do this or not, but maybe he could learn or create a spell that allows him to see people's auras. Not only would this allow him to know where his opponent is during battle, but he could also recognize his allies' auras to avoid attacking them as well. Overall, this is the design I came up with. Nothing too spectacular here, so let's move on. Up next is everyone's favorite womanizer, Disco Bear. Just like I said with Handy, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. He would be a bard. So what I came up with is this. I tried to give him the flashiest appearance I could, so tell me how well I did on that. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, it's the fan favorite himself, Flippy. I thought about it for a good two seconds before deciding to make him a paladin. I mean, it makes sense with Flippy being a soldier, since that's basically what a paladin is. So this is what I came up with for Flippy. I decided to model his helmet after the warrior's helmet from the Dragon Quest series. I also thought an eye scar would be a nice touch. I know Flippy doesn't have an eye scar in canon, but I thought it fit with him being a war veteran. Essentially making him a seasoned warrior with years of experience and scars to prove it. Up next we have Russell. With Russell being a pirate, I thought the most fitting class would be Rogue. So the design I came up with is this. In addition to making him a swashbuckler, I tried to give him a cocky, almost smug look on his face. Almost like he's eager to jump into battle. Up next is Mime. I debated with myself for a good while about what class Mime should be. Ultimately, I decided to make him a bard. I thought that makes sense since Mime is always trying to entertain people, and that's exactly what bards are. They're entertainers. So the design I came up with is this, and I know what you're probably thinking. Why on earth would a Mime of all people use something as loud as a gun? Do guns even exist in D&D? And as a matter of fact, they do, just as long as the DM allows it. Just check D&D Beyond. Second of all, it's a joke gun. He uses it to catch his opponents off guard before making his actual move. I also imagine mine being somewhat of a trickster, which we'll get into later on. Next up is Chrome Armit. I feel like Chrome Armit would be a barbarian. So here's what I came up with. Nothing too special, but I tried to also have him still look like a caveman. And finally, our last character, the official winner of the Voter Die Contest, Lammy. Let's make her a wizard, mainly because I haven't assigned a wizard to anything yet. Sorry, Bloodhunter, maybe another time. So anyway, here's the design I came up with. As you can see, it's nothing too spectacular. Alright, so now that we have designs out of the way, let's set some profiles. Kato's equipment will consist of a short sword as his main weapon, a short bow with 20 arrows, a dagger, a trident, and a shield, as well as a breastplate and chainmail. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be athletics and perception, and his alignment will be neutral good. Giggle's equipment would consist of a quarterstaff as her main weapon, a short bow with 20 arrows, and possibly a morning star, as well as light armor. Her spells would include Cure Wounds, Beacon of Hope, Banishment, Dispel Magic, Mass Cure Wounds, Raise Dead, and Zone of Truth. Her best skills would be Medicine and Religion, and her alignment would be Lawful Good. Toothy's equipment would consist of a longsword as his main weapon, a spear, a dagger, and a shield, as well as chainmail. His spells would include Cure Wounds, Beacon of Hope, Dispel Magic, Dispel Evil and Good, Death Ward, Revivify, and Create Food and Water. His best skills would be Insight and Medicine, and his alignment would be Lawful Good. Lumpy's equipment would consist of a light hammer as his main weapon, possibly a hand axe and a sickle, as well as medium armor. His spells would include Acid Splash, Create Bonfire, Alter Self, Creation, and Long Strider. His best skills would be Perception and Arcana, and his alignment would be Lawful Neutral. Petunia's equipment would consist of a quarterstaff as her main weapon, a club, a javelin, a dagger, and a sling, as well as studded leather. 
Her spells would include Dispel Magic, Druid Craft, Entangle, Enhance Ability, Hallucinatory Terrain, Lesser Restoration, Long Strider, Acid Splash, and Mass Cure Wounds. Her best skills would be Arcana and Nature, and her alignment would be Neutral Good. Handy's equipment would consist of his hard hat as his main weapon, a light hammer, a dagger, and a mace, as well as studded leather. His spells would include Create Bonfire, Creation, Aid, Create Food and Water, and Kinetic Jaunt. His best skills would be Arcana and Investigation, and his alignment would be True Neutral. Splendid's equipment would consist of a quarterstaff as his main weapon, and a dagger. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be Acrobatics and Insight, and his alignment would be Chaotic Good. Sniffle's equipment would consist of his robotic glove as his main weapon, a sling, and light hammer, as well as studded leather. His spells would include Creation, Long Strider, Poison Spray, Pyrotechnics, and False Life. His best skills would be Arcana and Investigation, and his alignment would be Chaotic Neutral. Pop's equipment would consist of a longbow as his main weapon, a longsword, a hand axe, and a maul, as well as light armor. Cub's equipment would consist of studded leather. Pop's spells would include Alarm, Animal Friendship, Animal Messenger, Hunter's Mark, Lesser Restoration, Speak with Animals, and Fog Cloud. Cub's spells would include Animal Friendship and Speak with Animals. Pop's best skills would be Animal Handling, Insight, and Survival. Their alignment would be true neutral. Flaky's equipment would consist of a dagger, a sling, and a quarterstaff. Her spells would include blindness slash deafness, burning hands, chain lightning, chaos belts, control flames, disintegrate, dragon's breath, enhance ability, featherfall, dimension door, shield, fireball, fire bolt, firestorm, and pyrotechnics. Her best skills would be arcana and deception. Her alignment would be true neutral. Nutty's equipment would consist of a warhammer as his main weapon, a whip, a dagger, a sling, and a shield, as well as a leather strap. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be intimidation and survival, and his alignment would be chaotic neutral. Lifty's equipment would consist of a dagger and short sword as his two main weapons, a rapier, a sickle, and a hand axe, as well as studded leather. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be deception, sleight of hand, perception, and stealth, and his alignment would be chaotic neutral. Shifty's equipment would consist of a stolen longbow as his main weapon, a short sword, a sickle, a mace, and a quarterstaff, as well as leather armor. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be sleight of hand, stealth, intimidation, and performance. And his alignment would be neutral evil. The mole's equipment would consist of a spear as his main weapon and a light hammer. His spells would include Blight, Thunderclap, Eldritch Blast, Minor Illusion, and Unseen Servant. His best skills would be Nature and Arcana, and his alignment would be Lawful Neutral. Disco Bear's equipment would consist of his cello as his main weapon, a short sword, a rapier, and a hand crossbow, as well as a breastplate. His spells would include Dimension Door, Charm Person, Cure Wounds, Confusion, and Feign Death. His best skills would be Performance, Athletics, and Insight, and his alignment would be True Neutral. Flippy's equipment would consist of a longsword as his main weapon, a mace, a halberd, and a crossbow, as well as chainmail. His spells would include Bless, Blinding Smite, Beacon of Hope, Divine Favor, Protection from Evil and Good, Revivify, and Zone of Truth. His best skills would be Intimidation and Medicine, and his alignment would flip-flop between Lawful Good and Chaotic Evil. Russell's equipment would consist of a rapier as his main weapon, a scimitar, and a trident, as well as studded leather. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be acrobatics, perception, intimidation, and sleight of hand, and his alignment would be lawful neutral. Mime's equipment would consist of his flute as his main weapon, and a short sword, as well as light armor. His spells would include Minor Illusion, Long Strider, Dimension Door, and Disguise Self. His best skills would be Performance, Deception, and Acrobatics. His alignment would be Chaotic Neutral. Chrome Marmot's equipment would consist of his club as his main weapon and a hand axe, as well as two leather straps. He would not use spells of any kind. His best skills would be Animal Handling and Intimidation. His alignment would be True Neutral. And finally, Lammy's equipment would consist of a quarterstaff as her main weapon, a dagger, and a sling. Her spells would include Alter Self, Air Bubble, Witch Bolt, Thunderclap, Thunder Wave, Shield, Dimension Door, Dispel Magic, Unseen Servant, and Whirlwind. Her best skills would be Arcana and Investigation, and her alignment would be Neutral Good. Alright, that just about covers it. <sighs> that was a long one. Anyway, let me know what you think. 
If you agree with anything I said in this video, or if you disagree, let me know why in the comments below or make a response video. And again, make sure to take everything with a pinch of salt, because again, I've only recently started playing D&D and I'm not even close to being an expert. Well, anyway, that's about it. So, as always, my name is PJ, and I'm gonna go get ice cream. You ain't never gonna slow me down, cause I feel alive now.